Good afternoon, cloud community, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas. We're midway through day two of three days here at Google Cloud Next. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by Cube founder and fabulous host John Furrier. John, what a great day for us. Great day, and we have a great set of guests coming up to, to break down the biggest news of the show, I think. They got a lot of headlines, certainly the custom the silicon person. axiom uh, from Google, real, real signal to the market that more horsepower is coming and the innovation for the developers, so it should be a great segment. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute great segment. On that note, Mohammed and Mark, thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I can imagine this is one of your bigger weeks of the year. <laughs> how, how has the reception been? Super, super exciting. I, I don't... Yeah, no, I mean, look, we're, we're really excited about this announcement. I think the customer reaction, the partner reaction, and the ecosystem reaction has been um, incredibly positive, so we're really excited to talk more about this uh, with you today. Yeah, all right, so let's dig in. Sure. Just in case folks haven't read the news from yesterday, what did we announce? Mohammed, go for it. Yeah, I mean, you know, Google announced they, uh, they've got their own um, custom-based ARM uh, processor that they built, so it's super cool. First one, right? First one out the gate, it's Neoverse V2 based. Um, you know, and we're, we're super excited to have partnered with them and kind of in, in making it happen. I mean, Mark and his team have been fantastic through the whole process, so super, super excited to get it out there. Mark, how did you know that this was the next development for Google? Well, you know, it's inter interesting you ask. Uh, Google has a rich history of custom silicon and systems development yes, for do. specific workloads. Uh, you know, five generations of TPUs, three generations of video coding units, multiple generations of processors that go into Pixel phones. And so, um, we were really excited to apply that sort of engineering prowess to, in many ways, a bigger space and a bigger problem, uh, which is general purpose data center computing, right? And so that's why we're, we're super excited about um, Axion, and we think it can solve a whole new set of challenges uh, for our customers. So when TK, Thomas Kurian was announcing this on the keynote, I'm like, okay, ARM's involved. We talked last year, kind of hinted a little bit this direction, but I like what he said. He said, quote, Axion processes ARM-based CPU, thank you very much, ARM, designed for the data center. I'm like, hmm, data center. We're right. back right. to the data center. <laughs> so, you know, cloud obviously had its success, Google Cloud, but the role of the data center is changing significantly. What's the motivation behind some of these design criteria with the new custom processor? Again, general purpose for the enterprise, I get that, but how is the enterprise changing? Because we're seeing AI systems emerge. Mm -hmm. So it's not your yesterday's data center, it's a different data center. Of course, right. Google is in the data center business, you have data centers. So, can you guys share the what this means for the data center redo or 2.0 or 3, whatever version we're on. What's the, the new data center look like? Yeah, I mean, it's super interesting. And I think, you know, the, the reality is is that the data center is sort of, it, it, it's turning into this, you know, it, it's, it's trying to deal with all these issues around performance, around sustainability, around efficiency. You know, these data centers are built, there's a certain amount of power that's brought into them, and you're trying to cram as much performance and as much efficiency out of them as possible so you can kind of keep up with, you know, AI and all these new workloads. And what's interesting about what, what, um, what Google has done is by you know, building silicon from the ground up, and in this case, general purpose compute, what they've been able to do is, is start to optimize what that infrastructure looks like so you can get the most efficiency out of it, you can get the most performance out of it. And you know, ARM for our part, I mean, we're a 30 year old company, right? And, and we've been <laughs> building efficient CPUs for a long, long time. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, this is kind of right in our sweet spot in terms of enabling them to kind of well, go off and do that. And not, not to put a plug in for ARM, but I mean, we've been tracking this for over a decade, the energy, energy aspect of what you guys have done also has been a big notable thing. That's a big part of the, the constraint now is power yeah. and, and efficiency and to get the most performance without the least amount of energy exerted. Absolutely, so you know, building on what Mohammed said, um, at Google we really design these systems based on a strategy we call workload optimized infrastructure. And basically what that means is we look at the needs of each and every workload and then we design it a systems level across compute, storage, and networking to meet the unique needs of each and every workload. And to your earlier point, we're seeing tremendous growth and in customer interest in scaling this next generation of applications, many of which are powered by AI. Now when you do that, uh, in most cases those applications also need to have general purpose compute that goes with them, right, to serve all the other aspects of, the, of those applications. And so um, performance becomes really critical, uh, and energy efficiency yeah. and cost becomes really critical. And so, we're really, I think, breaking new ground here together from that perspective. The Axion processors will have 30% higher performance than the fastest ARM processors available in the cloud today. They'll have 50% higher performance than comparable x86 
um, generation processors and 60% better energy efficiency than comp comparable uh, x86 based instances. So and these benefits are huge if you think about our customers say, not looking small to scale, numbers. scale their workloads. And yeah. on the nanometer side, what's the roadmap look like for the processors? Yeah, so I mean, we're not getting into the specifics of nanometers with the chip, et cetera. It's more about the, out, the, okay. the benefits that we can deliver <laughs> our customers here. But the, 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 the thing I will add is that um, that, that systems level point is really important, right? And so, you know, we take these fantastic Axion processors, but then we combine them with other elements of Google Cloud. For example, we have our titanium offload system. And so we're able to offload some of the infrastructure operations to those titanium uh, chips and systems. And that enables the full capabilities of the Axion processor to be able to use be uh, used for those workloads. And so it's these types of things that really uh, ultimately deliver so the So you guys benefit. are essentially doing some system design architecture around the role of compute for say, because you've got HPC and AI yeah. have come together, right? So we've seen yeah, that with GPUs sure. and TPU configurations. Yeah. So we're looking at kind of a melting pot of re-architecting. Yeah. Can you guys share yeah, and, more? And that's, and that's such an important point, right? I think the point that Mark made is such an important one that, that you know, what we're seeing is that, you know, the, the <coughs> Folks like Google, what they're doing is they're, they're re-architecting the entire infrastructure, the entire data center to really think about how do I optimize for my workloads? Nobody knows them better than them, right? How do they optimize the entire system? And, and that really starts down at the micro-architecture level. So we're actually, you know, Yesterday was a moment in time. We've been working with Google and you know, for, for, for literally years now on things like uh, microcode and microarchitecture optimization to ensure those workloads are, are optimized and then they've been thinking about it from that microarchitecture all the way up through the system and the networking and you know, how it's going to interact with other chips in the system, et cetera. I don't know, so you just mentioned the duration of partnership there and I'm curious, Obviously AI having a moment, workload optimized, silicon is, is brilliant, frankly, and it's absolutely vital for this yeah. next technological evolution. How, if you can share, were you collaborating on this before the hype curve really started to peak, or was there a bit of timing that coincided with that? I mean, we've, we've been collaborating together for, uh, for a number of years now, so it was actually before the AI, you know, sort of uh, demand curve really hit us all together. But I think, just to add to one thing Mohammed said earlier, I think it's really important is um, the applications that this is able to power. And yes. so, Google for many years has been leveraging ARM uh, for our internal services, things like Bigtable, Spanner, BigQuery. Uh, we also leverage it for things like uh, YouTube's, the YouTube Ads platform. And so we have experience there about how to optimize end-to-end -end those software services on top of the infrastructure. And now we're super excited about being able to supercharge all of those to the next level with the Axion capabilities that we've talked about um, before. So it's for our internal use within Google, but then the fantastic thing is we also expose that as a cloud service to our external customers so they can get the same benefits for a broad range of general purpose applications. That's awesome. great, great partnership with ARM. ARM has some advantages. They got the mature OSS and the ecosystem. Yeah. But before we get to that, I want to go back to the end-to-end -end real quick if you don't mind. We're seeing a pattern with, with um, people who are deploying and, and, and pushing production workloads in AI. They're usually pretty well-defined end-to-end, mm -hmm. and they're going to need performance, so if they're, they're going to have agents around them. So they're saying, I want an end-to-end -end right. workflow. Right. It's pretty baked. Right. It may change a little bit, but not much. They know what they're going to need. Is that a good use case for this kind of custom, I won't say custom, oh, custom silicon, custom infrastructure. You guys are looking at this as providing a solution to that, right? Is that oh, yeah. kind of? A absolutely, so if I take a specific example, right? Let, let's say you have an existing application and maybe that application is serving up some content to your users, right? Fantastic. Now, you might want to add, add an agent into the application or add some new generative AI service into that application to sort of supercharge its capabilities, right? Now when you do that, you're going to drive a ton of additional end customer demand for that service. What does that mean behind the scenes for the infrastructure? Well, um, you want to have a common set of cloud services and platforms, you want to be able to consume them through uh, Kubernetes engine like GKE, but then under the covers, be able to power that general purpose compute with great capabilities like Axion, and maybe power the AI part of it with our cloud GPUs or cloud TPUs. And so it's really at that systems level that we're able to deliver the just right type of infrastructure for the needs of every part of every application. Do you, do you see workloads being sent to different resource pools, kind of like almost like a scheduler, like hey, I'm going to do a prompt answer, that might be I.O., but then hey, I want to go do some reasoning, go off and to a custom set of high performance. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we, we, 
that is very, becoming a very, very dynamic world, right? And so, if you think about the users using these applications, they're going to exercise them in different ways. As they exercise them in different ways, we want to be able to have the infrastructure sort of respond to that dynamic nature of the request and uh, do that with great performance, great cost, and great efficiency. And so, having Axion-based instances in our portfolio allows us to do that at greater performance, greater scale, lower cost than ever before. Which is what everyone's asking for right now, quite literally. Everyone wants that easy button, give it to me quicker and faster. You mentioned Kubernetes, and I can't help but dig in a little bit on open source. Yeah. Uh, Google's got a long history of empowering the open source community. How does that play into this partnership? Yeah, so, so yeah, Google's got a long history of, of uh, working in open source. ARM's got a long history in working in open source as well. If you look at the infrastructure space specifically, we've literally been investing in the open source community for well over a decade now. Google's been investing alongside us for a good chunk of that time as well. And, and what's, what's really interesting right now is that, you know, we started off over a decade ago trying to get that ecosystem going, but now we're really at a point where tens of thousands of enterprise users are actually using ARM-based instances every day. We've got, you know, hundreds of open open source software packages which are you know, readily available and ARM's a first class citizen and, and is being, um, you know, uh, uh, support ARM. And so, you know, really we're at a point now where the, where the, you know, the flywheel has really started spinning in a, in, a, in a pretty massive way. So it's a really interesting time to be part of that, part of that ecosystem. We actually believe it's one of, our, one of our strongest attributes, you know, that coupled with the idea that you can take technology from us that's performant and efficient and then customize it at a system level to go off and build your, uh, you know, whatever solution and, and custom tailor it to your workloads and your infrastructure. So, yeah. so machine learning apps, that brings up the whole machine learning apps. Yeah. We heard on theCUBE here yesterday, um, a lot of talk about ML ops. As yeah. you get more generative AI, you're going to still have more model operations, whatever you want to call it now. But ML ops is becoming essentially AI ops, whatever you want to call it. So as these apps get built, you guys offer a compiler, I think, open, X, uh, open XLA. Yes. That's in your tool chain. That, do you, did you guys open source that? Is that, is that a ARM I don't project? know that we open sourced it specifically, but we're, we're certainly contributors in lots of different areas, including OpenXLA is an area that we participate in. Okay, so my question is developers. If I'm a developer, I want to build an edge app. Savannah and I were riffing on this this morning, like okay, if I want to build a lightweight edge app, but I want to need to do inference and all kinds of cool stuff, how does this processor fit into that picture? Uh, or does it? Yeah, um, I can take a shot if you'd like. Sure. Um, so if you think about any app, certainly an edge app, as we were talking about before, those applications will have some services that are really the inferencing associated with the model, right? And they'll have other more general purpose serving capabilities, right? There's a web server, there's an application server, there might be a database server behind it. Um, so now you think about serving that composite application, you want to have just the right infrastructure behind each of those elements of that application. And so, um, within Google we have great support for uh, GPUs and TPUs that are fantastic for serving those models in a very high performance efficient way. We support OpenXLA together with our partners in ARM and many others as part of that, so it's really critical. Um, but together with that you have all of the other aspects of that application the web servers, maybe a Java server, you've got the backend database. Right. All of those need to operate at great performance too. They need to operate at the same speed and same performance as the AI model part of that. And so that's really, um, Axion is incredibly complementary to those other ML-based, uh, AI-based services that we offer as well. So I want. Oh, I, I just want to add one thing, which is, you know, when you talk about edge applications and kind of, you know, that sort of thing, I think it's important to say that, you know, ARM ships, you know, ARM partners ship billions of devices into edge applications, uh, you know, every, uh, every year. And and what we're seeing quite often is that, you know, the folks that are developing those applications, let's say it's a car or let's say it's a um, yeah. industrial gateway or a robotics device. They want binary compatibility in terms of their development environment. They want to be able to go do sophisticated yeah. testing and they want to be able to do it in the cloud so they yeah. can take advantage of things like CI, CD pipelines, et cetera. Right. And so the fact that they're running that same architecture allows them to run that same code in both places. That's a huge area of it yeah. that we're seeing a lot of traction. I mean, you guys are two big brands in the, in the tech space. Obviously ARM, well known for the work you guys do from, at many levels, from high performance in the data center to, to the edge and, and billions of devices. Google, obviously, <laughs> everyone knows what Google's doing at all many levels, huge brands. For the people that aren't in the, in, inside the ropes of the industry, talk about the relationship. What does ARM bring into the table? What's Google bring into the table? What is the, I mean, the, the results, the chip, I get that. You design chips with you. What's the difference? How do, how do you explain it to someone who's not 
in the industry. What does ARM bring to the table? And Google, where do you guys meet? How did this all come together? Why don't together? you start and I'll jump yeah. in. Sure, I mean, sure. you know, obviously ARM's a, you know, at the end of the day, ARM looks at, you know, some of these markets and some of these technologies from an end-to-end -end perspective. So we look at, you know, what does it mean to develop a, a CPU and a, and a uh, yeah, compute subsystem and interconnects for applications like the data center and automotive and IOT and all these different use cases. We've got tremendous amount of experience in that and we go off and we spend quite a bit in the software associated with that. But Google lives some of this on a day-to-day -day basis. They have so the big iron. We, yeah. <laughs> we deliver those platforms into a company like Google and then they you know, go off and really start to hone it in and, and make it you know, applicable and relevant and optimized for, for their particular Custom uh, use Custom silicon. Case. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, so I mean, we, we, I mean, we've had a fantastic partnership over many, many years. Um, we work together at so many different levels. So, you know, clearly at the silicon level, Google Design Systems leveraging the ARM yeah. uh, architecture, Neoverse V2. Um, but it goes beyond that, right? It's also at the software layer, as we were talking about before, um, which is really, really critical to our customers because it speaks to time to value, right? If you can take an existing application, an existing ISV that's already been optimized for ARM, and now you can easily bring it into Google Cloud and run it on Axion and get the benefits, that's a huge time to market value, and that is based on the great partnership that we have together at the software layer. And then sort of beyond that, from a Google Cloud perspective, we surround that with the rest of the system, right? The storage that goes with it, the network, the Kubernetes consumption surface, the op optimization of our applications on top of that, um, and really deliver that as an end-to-end -end system. So it's a, it's a deep, deep partnership at, at its heart that makes all of that, um, those bigger benefits possible. I mean, you're basically customers. taking Google's objective design criteria right. with ARM's capabilities together, hence custom silicons born out of it. So yeah. it's basically exactly. purpose built for exactly. your, your and stuff. And if you think, as you mentioned before, if you think about Google, we have experience building and operating and optimizing applications for consumers that are leveraged by billions of consumers around the world each, right? And so that expertise we have around what it takes to run applications at large scale, we're able to leverage that, take that, and use that as we design together what, you know, what Axion needs right. to look like and do. So now I'm like, okay, what's in, what's in it for me? Performance, what are some of the benefits that's going to come from this? How do you guys see this? Obviously, huge investment, huge decision, huge development. Yeah. What's going to be the output of this? What's the range of, of scope that benefits for us? I mean, maybe I, I can start. Um, so, uh, first, yeah. we think this is going to be huge for our cloud customers, right? They are looking to scale their business, they're looking to scale their applications to support that. When they do that, they need to do it with great performance, with cost effectiveness, because that drives the profitability of their business, and energy efficiency is incredibly important. And so with Axion, we can enable that value to them incredibly rapidly because they can bring all their existing ARM ap optimized applications into that environment incredibly quickly. So we think this is going to be transformative for a broad range of our cloud customers. And then also for us internally within Google, we're going to be leveraging this for, as I mentioned before, for our uh, consumer-based services. So we're super excited about those benefits that we can deliver. Yeah, I mean, I think Mark hit on it. I mean, I think the, the biggest things are, you know, if you think about what, what enterprise and what users are looking for, they're looking for performance, they're looking to get the job done, and they're looking to go off and hit some of those uh, efficiency and sustainability goals. And, and really what Axion and, you know, uh, leveraging that, that ARM-based Neoverse um, platform is, is, it's really delivering, so. I, I think that's so powerful and I think that's so important. Here we are always trying to do things faster and adopt and now we've got massive amounts of data. If we're not doing it more sustainably and more efficiently, we're running ourselves straight into the ground. So it's such a <laughs> great synergy between both companies. Closing question for you, now that it's out in the wild and you've made the big announcement, years in the making, which is very exciting, what do you hope that you can say at the next Google, Google Cloud Next about how it's being used in the wild? Go ahead. You want to take it? Uh, I'll go first maybe and sure. jump in. I love how you both deferred there. You're like, <laughs> I need a second. <laughs> so, um, you know, first of all, I'd say, look, we're really looking forward to launching our Axion-based instances later this year, getting those into the hands of our cloud customers. If you fast forward, let's say, a year from now to next, next year, I'm looking forward to having hundreds, thousands of customers being able to share the benefits that that provided to them, to their businesses, to their applications, and how it was really enabling them to transform the value they could add to their customers. So I'm really looking forward to that customer adoption. I think 
the feedback we've already gotten from our early adopter customers, um, companies like Elastic, like Snap, like many others, has been extremely positive. And so we're looking to build on that and of course uh, help many, many more customers going forward. Yeah, and, and I would just add to that, I mean I think it's really about those specific use cases, about the specific customer success stories that have come about and that you know, we can stand up and say, hey, this came about and this customer achieved that level of success, they had that level of efficiency gain, that much better performance, they could complete their job, they saved this much. You know, it's, it's those sorts of things that I think, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to sharing with everybody. Great stuff. Yeah, really great stuff, and what an exciting time. Mark, Mohammed, thank you both so much for being here, and congratulations again on what will undoubtedly be a legendary next for you. John, always a pleasure yeah. with your insights, and thank all of you for tuning in, wherever you may be viewing today. We're here in Las Vegas, Nevada, at Google Cloud Next. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.